I don't want to freak anybody out here, but I think we just made a Star Wars movie. Last Jedi left some fans shocked by Luke Skywalker's story. Looking back, would you change anything in your script or do you stand by all your choices? Nope, stand by every choice. I don't have to tell you things are bad. Everybody knows things are bad. This video made possible by Squarespace. Get a kick-ass website today. The news is out that Ryan wants to come back. Not just his three films. No, 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 he's not happy with that. He wants a shot of The Mandalorian because he wants to work on something that people actually like. But I think we should keep that little fucker away. Now, the fans of The Last Jedi are going to be very excited by this news, which is to be expected. They think Ryan Johnson is a god. Some even think he invented cinematography. But more surprisingly, is that some of the people that absolutely hated The Last Jedi don't seem to have an issue with him directing The Mandalorian because they seem to think it was just the writing that was the problem with that film. And I hate to differ, but you're fucking wrong. I don't even know how you'd separate the writer from the director when it's the same person. What, do you think he was on set looking at this shot going, that's a fucking stupid idea, but I have to do it because, you know, it's in the script. Now, this news came from the amazing Sarah Wilson. Is it Sarah? Saria? I'm not sure. Sorry. Oh, is that her? I think Sarah might have had a bit of work. But anyway, she works on USA Today. She's a mum, a best-selling author, and a huge Raylo. I wonder how many books you need to get on the bestseller list. Three to five thousand. At 99 cents a book, that's a small investment to get on the bestseller list. Oh my god, Robert Head's erotic stories is coming out. Now, Seria was lucky enough to interview the amazing Ryan Johnson. And because they're both into romance novels, they got along like a house on fire. Anyway, Sarah was lucky enough to confirm with us that Ryan's still getting his three Star Wars films, which I say, thank fuck, because I've got to pay for that Cybertruck somehow. But not just that, he's incredibly interested in directing one of the Mandalorian episodes, which is fucking incredible news. But I still think we should put a stop to this, because I don't think he's that good. <laughs> Great, I got it. <laughs> Now, when you think of a good director, you think of their strengths. Are they great with actors and can bring out a great performance? Or are they better at handling action scenes? Is spectacle their thing? Or is their main skill asking the digital department to turn the saturation up to full? Because I'm sure people that say this film looks great also think sunset photos are the height of photography. I think if you take away the effects, the sets, and the sound effects, you are left with a very pedestrian director. But in case I'm wrong, let's go through and check a few scenes to see what a great job he did. I'm never too keen to relive this. First, getting the best out of the actors. Now, it is up to the director to explain what a scene needs to the actor and what delivery the actor should be going for. Wait, should it be like this? Finn! Or Finn? I want you to... Or Finn. How about Finn with two commas after it? Finn, the double comma. (laughs) Action! George Lucas famously only had one piece of advice for his actors, and that was to do it faster. George was lucky enough to have a lot of talent around him. Harrison would tell him to his face that his lines were crap. I said to George, you can type this stuff, stuff, (laughs) but you can't say it. He'd also tell Mark Hamill to have the confidence to do the scenes the way he wanted. Carrie was there to rewrite the script, and George's wife was also there to support the actors and their ideas. Not only that, he could turn to her to cut the film in the end. The winners are Paul Hirsch, Marsha Lucas and Richard Chu for Star Wars. Now Ryan doesn't have that type of help because Ryan's ego won't allow it. So we get some truly terrible takes, sadly from a lot of people that can actually act if they're working with the right director. Hugs. Check out that facial expression. That's a wonderful bit of directing there. That was the best take, apparently, because it really is more interesting if you don't have your actors constantly doing the blatantly obvious expressions and delivery for every shot. Losing hope. Look as miserable as possible. Angry. Take it to 11 every time. Romance. Have a grown man act like a teenage boy. And there's some great direction. Just have Chewie sit there, doing nothing. Also love all the shots that are just done with the other actor just saying all their lines off screen as someone looks miserable. He's only getting stronger. The First Order will control all the major systems within weeks. One of the other amazing talents that Ryan shows off when directing is his blocking, or simply setting up the shot and where the actor should stand. The New York Film Academy describes it as, blocking a scene is simple, working out the details of an actor's moves in relation to the camera. You can also think of blocking as the choreography of a dance or ballet. All the elements on the set, actors, extras, vehicles, crew, equipment, should move in perfect harmony with each other. So yes, let's look at Ryan's beautiful choreography. Well, already we've lost Poe in the shot. Again, some great directing here where she just ignores him and looks busy in what's one of the most uncomfortable setups for a scene I've ever witnessed. I mean, look at that framing. 
Could it look more fucking awkward? I've seen drunk uncles frame more interesting shots after a fight at Christmas. With good direction, you should just be in the scene, not reminded you were looking through the frame of a camera the whole time. This isn't a director creating a great shot. This is someone awkwardly trying to virtue signal. And then in the very next scene, shows how stupid and shoved in they were. All five of them shoved in that little space and then nothing. Except for the two droids plonked straight in the foreground for no reason at all. Some films are so beautifully shot, you just feel like you could take any frame out and it would make a wonderful photo. <laughs> Not so much this film. Okay, so we'll put one girl here, hmm? one here, hmm? getting there, one there, and one here. Oh, this is so powerful. I'm the perfect male feminist. Oh, we'll just shove Poe in here. Perfect. He looks so tiny. <laughs> this will make Empire look like shit. Some of Ryan's camera technique choices really astound me. One is the dolly shot where you have a camera on a track so it can be moved really smoothly. Now, this shot can be used in really interesting ways, but not with Ryan. Every time Ryan needs a bit of emotion, he starts moving the camera in. Yes, film class 101. Oh, and when you're not just dollying in, dolly out on a long shot. We didn't have time for the Knights of Red in this film, but we've got time for this depressing long look at Leia. All we need is a sec. Oh, thank God, there it is, the second view. Oh, and when the action starts moving, just slightly dolly in and out, but a little bit faster. The second technique Ryan completely overuses in the most boring way possible is the close-up. It feels so good to be zoomed in. Now, the close-up can be an amazingly powerful shot, but not the way Ryan uses it. Now, while some directors will use their imagination and camera skill to direct the audience to what they want them to look at or what's important in a scene, Ryan just does a hard-ass close-up on anything he thinks is important. Switch, close-up, book, close-up, touching wood, close-up, close-up on bracelet. And if it's not a close-up on the hand so we know exactly where to look, it's a close-up on the face. Just constant close-ups on the face. Close-up, helmet, close-up, close-up of the helmet. I've never seen a director that is so reliant on the close-up to give a scene context. There's no directing of the eye with the camera. It's just point it at the thing you want us to look at. What wonderful direction. Extreme close-up of face, extreme close-up of item, and back to face again. We have seen that before. Make sure you've got that hard close-up of the next item we're about to see. Because Rose couldn't have just pulled this out. We had to see her take it out of the buckle. Directing 101. Fuck me. Or close-ups. You could count the close-up shots on one hand in the original trilogy. He feared you might follow old Obi-Wan on some damn fool idealistic crusade like your father did. And don't look at a masterpiece like The Godfather. That movie would be lucky to have three close-ups in the whole film. Oh, we're getting ready for emotion, so I hope there's some close-ups. Yes, here they come. Close-up, close-up, close-up again, and close-up. Every single time, we just close-up with the face and close-up with the hands are doing. Bravo for the direction. Nothing says direction like layer in space. Close-ups on faces and close-ups on hands. How many times are we going to do that in this film? And again, the way he sets up people. I mean, this shot at the window is just fascinating. And of course, Fit is at the back looking like an idiot. And look at the direction of that body movement. Just hold the one stiff dead position the whole way through. Close-up, 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 close-up. Mmm, look interested. Usually when I think of great directors, I don't think about how fucking boring every scene is and how much time is wasted. Look in locker, look at item, grab item. All the directing is so literal. Fuck's sake, have some flair. So much wasted time in this crap. And remember, we gave up the Knights of Ren for this. Again, if you're going to the film school of bleeding obvious direction. Give it to me one more time, simpler. If you're sneaking around, you got to duck down and make it as obvious as possible. I can't see yours. Just you, 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 just you. But just before we go on with this Ryan love fest, I need to talk to you about Squarespace. Not only do they provide amazing websites, they also support a lot of creators like me. And trust me, we need all the help we can get. Now with the different platforms always changing their rules, you need a home where people can always find you. And that home should look amazing and work for you. That's why you need to visit Squarespace. Take your business, shop or online presence to a new high with an easy to manage, amazing looking website. Squarespace is the only website builder for creatives and business owners that are taking it seriously and want to look fantastic. 
fantastic. Start by choosing a professionally designed template, then bring it to life with photo galleries, portfolios, and even video backgrounds to show off everything you do. You can even monetize your own content on your own website, which is the future for us all. Squarespace also provide marketing tools to help you grow your social media presence. So yes, you could say they virtually take care of everything. Go to squarespace.com to start your free trial. And when you are ready to take off, go to squarespace.com slash robot head and you will receive a full 10% off your first purchase. See the link below. Don't put it off any longer. Get your business flying today. And don't forget every decision to make Finn look like an idiot. That wasn't just in the script. Close up. Every time you see him look fucking stupid, that was a decision made on set by Ryan. Watch him. Ryan sat there as director and watched this cool looking black dude look like a fuckwit in every scene. And he sat there happy. Tell me again about how he's a great director. Wow. Oh, no, no, here's some great direction. Where the depth of field and landscape don't look in perspective. Now, with the great directing here, if you look at this scene, how far away is that fucking rock meant to be? And how big is it? Then, spinny, spinny, she's right up next to it. Just look at that again. Nowhere near the rock. Can't even tell how big that fucking rock is. The framing's so shit. And then, spin. Oh, so the rock looks that far, it looks like you'd have to step down, walk across the grass, and you'd be near it. And the thing would be 30 foot fucking high. But somehow, she spins around, and she's right next the fucking thing oh no she's not she's further back again is she near the fucking rock or not close up of item can't forget that close up everything's got to be blatantly obvious oh lightsaber stick lightsaber again how far is she from that rock now why is perspective not important to ryan johnson oh she's back next to it oh you'd be swinging that thing that close to your head and again for directing brilliance this has to be one of my favorite scenes as i've said before the kids swinging the broomstick in the backyard so as I can't think of one interaction between any characters in this film that has any interesting direction at all, let's see how he goes with the action because I'm sure he must be good at that then. Oh dear. I oh know. Oh, I should really do a video on those bombers. As we've established, this action scene is fucking laughable. But some other people that say that they didn't like Last Jedi excuse all of this because they say it's just the script. Did the script say, make this scene fucking stupid? I mean, this isn't pathetic either. Directing the actors to be all joyful and happy in the middle of everyone getting massacred. And yes, this would have been in the script as well. Bet you think on set, you might fucking wake up a bit. There's some of my favourite direction. That guy turning around to look at Kylo's fist. They're exploding a dude out in the sand with a thousand million fucking trillion shots. He's screaming his head off. And for some reason, his hand catches his eye and he turns to stare at it. And that's the bit that disturbs him. The script might have said, that's enough. But it's on set that you've really got to make him scream like fucking lunatics. That's enough! More! These go to 11. Now, amongst all this confused talk about Ryan's directing abilities, he seems to also be getting a lot of credit for the cinematography in this film, which, sorry to his cinematographer, fuck you. But I think people are getting confused about what makes good cinematography. Because you see, when I think of good cinematography, I'm thinking of a world I've entered. Interesting shots, choices of lenses, how the camera movement makes me feel, how it directs me through a scene, the way a shot's beautifully framed, and not just someone in front of a green screen with the background drawn in. I'm sure you are. A look and feel that suits the story I'm in. Because this film looks like a fucking stage show and looks nothing like the other Star Wars movies. And this isn't about a changing time and a different era. It's about choosing the right type of cinematography for the story you're telling. Let me see if I can explain this clearer with the help of Roger Deakins, who is easily one of my favourite cinematographers. You might have heard of him. And if you haven't, I bet you've watched some of his films. His plethora of work is just a collection of some of the greatest looking films you've ever seen. And they can all look so different. He hasn't got one bag of tricks. He doesn't rely on oversaturation. Like some kind of fucking idiot. But anyway, Roger doesn't speak like me, so let's just get a few quotes from him to help understand what I'm saying. I think people confuse pretty with good cinematography. What was it Freddie Francis says? There was good cinematography and bad cinematography, and then there's the cinematography that's right for the movie. And uh, I often feel that actually if, if people, if reviewers don't mention your work, it's probably better than if they do. It means it actually works because the film is a piece. That's right. You're confusing pretty for cinematography. 
That's not storytelling. Your favourite films might have memorable scenes, scenes that you love or talk about, but you don't just talk about it for how it looks, which is what we see every fucking day about The Last Jedi. (laughs) It's every day some dickhead's putting up a photo of that fucking throne room scene and just praising and ejaculating all over the place. The fact that the scene is ridiculous, the action is terrible, nothing makes fucking sense, doesn't bother these people. It's colourful and bright. It's like keys in front of a fucking baby. (laughs) Knives Out could be the greatest film you've ever seen. But not every director can do every style of film. Fucking keep him away from Star Wars. He's hopeless with the people. He's terrible at the action. And he's completely uninventive as a director. So if you love Last Jedi, I've got some great sunset shots you'd love to see. But if you hate it, don't just blame the script. His directing's just as fucking bad. But who are we kidding? We'll be lucky to see The Mandalorian again. And Ryan's not getting a directing job. And he's not getting his three films. Which sadly for me means I won't be able to pay for that cyber truck. <laughs> oh, great, I got it. <laughs>